My name is Josh, I work with Verto. I'm our Senior Associate Director of Admissions. Um, I've been working in the student travel field for a long time, about eight years now. Um, I've, I've worked with students in, in places like India and Tanzania, uh, man, in about 12 other countries around the world. And I'm just such a big proponent of traveling and getting out there and seeing different places, exploring new cultures. I think it's such a great way to learn. And Emily you said you already want to start college with your first year abroad. And that is, that is such an amazing launching pad for students who are thinking about what major they're, they're, they're wanting to study or, or solidifying what they already know they like doing. So that's wonderful to hear. And I'm with you there. Um, so with Verto, we want students to have those experiences as their first semester or their first year. We want this to be a launching pad for them. Um, so uh, what we say to students is start college differently with Verto, differently meaning don't sit behind the desk after your first semester. Your orientation freshman year, instead of learning where to do the laundry and where the cafeteria is, learn how to navigate a new culture. What better way to kind of kick off your learning than that, we think. Um, the second big piece to this is we want, oops, wrong slide. We want college to be much more accessible and affordable. Um, we think it's such a big, um, a big injustice in America, really, what we do to families in terms of college admission, tuition, uh, selectivity. I think we kind of are not focusing on the right things um, with that. So we want this to be accessible and affordable, and we'll talk about all the ways that we're doing that. So if any of that was interesting, you know, good. If not, okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, practically speaking, uh, what students typically do with Verto is they'll spend their first year of college or their first semester of college traveling the world. Depending on what type of traveler you want to be, what your learning style is, what your goals are, the different locations offer different types of experiences, and we'll go through those quickly too. Um, each semester with Verto, you will earn 16 college credits, so it's going to help you graduate. Um, but again, depending on what type of experience you're looking for, um, you might not ever set foot in a classroom. So it's just a way for you to experience a different part of the world and keep on your four-year timeline, no matter what your goals are. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. Um, so that's kind of the, the basic, quick sentence, two-sentence version of, of what Verto is. The, oh. Well, we'll skip that one for now. I, I won't talk your ears off. Um, the way that I like to frame Verto for people who are hearing about us for the first time is you guys can really think about Verto kind of like the common app. We've got 50, actually 55 partner colleges now spread out across the US. Uh, students apply through the Verto application to any of our partner colleges. That's a free application. It gives you a higher shot getting into our partner schools, which we'll talk about. And upon acceptance, you're able to spend your first semester traveling the world. So your acceptance letter from Verto might say something like, congratulations, you got into Verto education, and here's an acceptance letter from the University of Oregon. So when you're traveling with Verto for that first semester, you know you're a University of Oregon student, you're earning credits that count towards your degree, and you're sticking right in your four-year timeline. The only difference is you get to spend your first semester traveling the world. So that's kind of our timeline for students and the way that we approach this four-year degree with integrated travel and, and world experience. That makes sense. Thumbs up. That made sense. Okay, cool. Um, it's a new idea, so it's sometimes hard to grasp firsthand, which is understandable. Okay. Uh, Emily and Lily, I'm not going to make you talk about these things and embarrass you, but think about who you are as a person and what makes you tick and what you're passionate about and what you want to do. And think about how those things can play into what Verto offers, because I think a lot of colleges at this point anyway, in the States, they view students as dollar signs and, and data points. And we're really trying to shift that focus back to what is a student bringing to the table with who they are, um, what their motivations are, and kind of what they're going to add to a campus environment more than those data points, which are important, but I think not the whole picture. So think about those things for yourself and how they can kind of play into what I'm gonna talk about. That's it. And Will Ferrell's awesome. So there's Will Ferrell and Elf. Um, okay. So let's talk about, I'm gonna skip these actually for a second. Let's talk about where you can go, what experiences you can have abroad. Keep in mind, Emily, you're a sophomore, Lily, you're a freshman. When you guys are ready to graduate, there will be more dots on this line, more locations. When you're ready to graduate, we'll have more partner colleges. This is just for fall 21, so this will give you an idea of some of the places that we go and some of the stuff that we do. Um, so typically now, students either will choose a semester in Europe or a semester in the field to start college at. If you're someone who is really independent, if you've maybe traveled before, if you'd like to experience a big European city and be in a huge urban modern environment, I would point you towards England, Italy, or Spain. We call those on-campus semesters where 
you are going to a study center um, maybe three to four times a week for classes in the heart of these big cities in Europe. In your downtime, you can explore on your own. You can really make those journeys what you want. Um, if that's more of your style, more of your ilk, I would point you towards those three. On the other hand, if you're someone who wants to see parts of the world that are not known to most people, if you're looking to get a little bit more rustic and immerse yourself in lesser known countries and cultures, I'd point you towards Hawaii, Latin America, or South Pacific, where you'll never set foot in a classroom, but you'll earn the same amount of college credit. So it just depends on what type of experience you're looking for. Each have really, really strong and, and um, deep benefits, I think, in terms of their experiences. If you want both experiences, awesome. You can travel for your first full year and travel to Europe in the fall, do a field semester in the spring, totally up to you um, or one or the other. So we will quickly look at on-campus semesters and field semesters. Um, couple things to keep in mind. Again, 16 credits per semester, doesn't matter where you go. The, the courses you take on our each semester, they're likely gonna count as your general education credit. So even if you're traveling to London with Berto, for example, and you don't want to be a history, business, politics major, which is the focus here, it's okay because the credits are gonna count as gen ed. So even if you're not intending to study these just, uh, specific subjects, it's gonna work towards your graduation and just tick off those boxes that most colleges are gonna want from you. That part makes sense? Okay, cool. So keep in mind, so like, again, if you're, if London is calling to you, but politics and business is not your, what you want to do with your career, it's okay. You can still travel here and experience the city and study some really cool stuff and it's going to count towards your graduation. Um, that said, again, Europe semesters, campus-based semesters really are about um, experiencing these cities at an independent level. And so you are living in a residence hall with your other Virto classmates. Um, you're going to our study center about three to four times a week for, for classes. Here are the subjects you're studying. Um, throughout the semester, we have these kind of uh, excursions, these built-in experiential opportunities where we'll take you to Stonehenge, we'll take you to castles, um, some really cool castles around in and around London. We might hold class at the British Museum one day. We might go see a guest speaker who runs like a, I don't know, like a business entrepreneurship organization for young people or something like that. So all that's still built in, even though you're in Europe. Uh, I'm sorry, even though you're an, on an on-campus experience, but again, in your downtime, you really have the freedom to travel throughout the city if you want. And London will give you a tube pass. That's their metro card that you can have throughout the entire semester. Um, you can go and see theater shows. You can go and check out the art scene, the street markets. London is famous for uh, street food and, and being able to go and bargain for really great ethnic food for like next to nothing. It's really cool. I'm actually a residence hall is really um, right next to one of those. So again, if that's more your scene, great. These are great options for you. Um, and London has everything from uh, cultural historic sites to um, you know, the West End where you can see theater shows to a great sports scene and awesome art scene. So it's really just uh, a really cool place to be. Um, next on-campus option is Italy in Milan. If you're a visual person or a creative thinker or a kind of a, you know, have an artistic mind, I'd point you towards here maybe. We're studying mainly philosophy, development, and art history. So really trying to make the courses relevant to where you're gonna be living. What is cool about Italy, here are some of the excursions we do. There is so much to see and do around, in and around Italy, and we'll take you to some of it through Berto, but again, you're free to travel as much as you want on your downtime. Um, but what is really cool about Italy is that your courses, even though you're with Verto students, taking Verto courses coming from US colleges, you're gonna physically be at an Italian university for your classes called Università Cattolica. It's a beautiful campus right in the heart of Milan. And that's where your courses are held uh, for the most part. So if you ever wondered like, what's it like to be a European college student? This is a great way to experience that at a really, really cool campus in one of the most um, historically and cultur culturally rich cities in Europe uh, being Milan and Italy. So this is a great option for you there. And again, it's Italy, so you can't go wrong, right? Carbs, beautiful places what's not to like it's italy um so that is the second on-campus option next we have oh, yep madrid in spain um lots of variety in what courses you're studying here so this can fulfill many gen ed requirements um and if you're someone who's not sure what you want to study emily i know you're thinking sports management who knows when you're a senior you might change your mind i don't know um this is a really great way to get your feet wet in a lot of different subjects anthropology history um economics the Spanish language, if you're a language buff, this is a great way to study Spanish. Um, and if you're studying Spanish, living in Madrid, 
you're going to come out fluent. Like it's just going to happen uh, whether you want it to or not. Um, that's Madrid. Really, really cool option. They're very similar to London in that we're living in a residence hall, going to our study center for the most part for classes. And we're doing all these awesome excursions along the way you can see here. I think similar to Milan, you really can't go wrong. Nobody comes back from Spain and reacts like, yeah, that was okay. Everybody loves Spain. Um, okay. Skip these. Yeah, beautiful. Lots of stuff to see around Spain. Flamenco and football, something we do as well as part of the, the experience. Okay, field semesters. So different than on-campus semesters, these are about showing students what life is like in parts of the world that you might not get, ever get to see even going as a tourist. And, and maybe even showing students, hey, what does it mean to be a cultural anthropologist when you graduate or, or do that for your career? What does it mean to be an environmental scientist as a prof or do that for your profession? So the way that field semesters work, each of these courses here corresponds with a specific location within these regions. So when you're studying sociology in Hawaii, for example, you're gonna be in Hilo on the Big Island. You live out of a base house. We have these really cool Verto base houses. And every single day, you're gonna jump out to do different community visits and site visits and research projects. They'll come back as a group, no more than 25 students per group, four to five faculty for each field semester group. And you will talk about what you did that day through an academic lens. So that's kind of how you're taking your college courses. And it's a really rich uh, context for the subjects you're studying in that your academic coursework is related to things you're doing every day, people you're meeting every day in the field, really, again, about showing you what does it mean to do this for your entire career. So for a lot of students who are not sure what they want to do, if you're getting hands-on work as an environmental scientist, as a freshman, that can really inform, like, I want to continue on this, continue doing this for my major and, and do this uh, as a career. So that's the idea with field semesters. And you're traveling really heavily throughout these regions. Um, my mother actually is from Hawaii. She's, she's from Honolulu, so I used to go there all the time as a kid. But uh, I never saw some of the places our students get to go to, even visiting there, um, having a ton of family over there. So it's a really great way to experience um, even Hawaii, which is, which is uh, largely unknown to a lot of people. This is an example of what a base house might look like. So you can imagine this being your first semester of college instead of like a dorm room. Um, if that's exciting to you, then these are great options. So we've got some really cool structures there. Latin America, second option in the field. Love this curriculum, Costa Rica and the Dominican Republic. So you actually get to be in two countries for the entire semester. You're studying development, environmental sciences and history. I love this curriculum, particularly the development course where you get to experience these jungle communities and talk to people about um, how Western influence is impacting their ways of life and understanding what they're going through by really visiting places that you just would not even know existed. This is a picture of, of um, our group from 2019. They're walking to class, uh, meaning they're walking to a village that's only accessible by boat for their development course for the day. So that's kind of how we structure, again, these, uh, these lessons. And then when they finish that, they come back to an, uh, their base house, might look like this, and talk about what they did that day and learn about it from this academic lens. So you can see why the context under which you learn is so much deeper, I think, than just learning about it from a textbook. Um, so this is a great option in Latin America. Um, here's the base house in one of our hubs in Costa Rica. We do um, water, uh, I don't know what this is called, rope, rappling, spelunking, whatever that's called. I'd pass on that, I'm not great with heights, but you know, that's for you to decide. Um, we also do a volcano hike there in uh, La Fortuna up, up at the top there. That's a really cool volcano hike we do. Anywho, that's Latin America. Last field semester, South Pacific. This might come as a huge shock, but this is our most popular semester. Can't imagine why. Uh, it's three countries, Fiji, Australia, New Zealand. Month in each country in Fiji, you're looking at anthropology. In New Zealand, you study sociology. In Australia, you do wildlife conservation for your environmental sciences course. So really, really cool stuff there. Um, in Fiji in particular, we do a lot of great sort of island hopping and we get to see these places that are just like untouched um, and unknown, unknown to a lot of tourists. So South Pacific, awesome semester there. Okay, those are our fall 21 semester options. I promise um, we'll have more when you guys are graduating. So this is just could give you a little glimpse on what those are. Before I talk about college admission, any questions on just the semesters and what you'd be doing on the experience. If not, great, awesome, okay. I'm just gonna assume you're jumping for joy on the inside. Um, okay, 
College admission through Verto, second huge pillar of what we do. We want this to be accessible. We want students to have access to a four-year degree, not just to travel. So what we've done, and I'll show you this actually, this might be easier. What we've done is partner with 55 now colleges across the country. I keep a running document for these presentations because we're adding partner colleges almost every month, which is super exciting. So what you can do if you want is start the virtual application. It's free. You can indicate what partner schools you'd like to apply to. So let's say you choose William and Mary in Virginia. Maybe you choose University of Oregon in Oregon or uh, maybe Catholic University in DC. Once you do that and finish the Virto application, you don't need to apply our partner colleges separately. You only have to complete the Virto app and we will send your application off to these universities. It typically takes about three weeks for us to come back to students and say, congratulations, you got into Virto. You also got into Catholic University or whatever school they put on there. Now, we can never guarantee admission into a partner school, um, but if your grade point average and test scores and whatever are on that bubble on what you would normally need to get into these universities, uh, applying through Virto can only increase your chances. And what we're seeing is that a lot of students get into REACH schools applying through Virto because our partner colleges know that students who travel just do better and they make them look better because they're focused, excited, ready to learn. So uh, this not only gives you an advantage in admission to these schools, but it gives you a pretty much surefire way to enter university, ready to go, focused, excited, confident in what you want to do. That's the idea here. Um, and again, of course, stick it on your four-year timeline. Um, so this is an option for all students to apply to our partner colleges. It can only help you, and it's not going to um, set you back on your time or money in any way just to apply. So I highly encourage you to look into these schools. You've got time, deep breaths. This is there for you when you're ready. Does that make sense, that part of it? I have a question. Um, competitiveness on these schools, um, is there like a GPA threshold they have to meet overall, like an average GPA? Yes. Great question. So I would say our absolute cutoff for GPA to just be accepted into Virto is a 2.0. We it's it's very hard for us to accept a student who's got lower than a 2.0. Um, average GPA maybe is about a 2.5, 3.0 who who you know travel with us. If a student let's say is gunning for William and Mary, um, they're I mean typically they take 4.0 students. So that's why I was saying if somebody's on that bubble, if they have like a 3.7, 3.8 and they apply through Virto to William and Mary, that gives them a much higher shot getting in than if they were to apply normally. If you have a 2.5 and you say, hey, I wanna to apply to William and Mary through Virto, we're gonna help point you towards maybe a school that's a better fit for you um, that has a little bit lower threshold for GPA. So again, that's why I'm saying we can't guarantee admission to a partner school, but this can only help if a student's on that bubble with what they would, might normally need for a partner college admission. Make sense? Okay. Thank you. For sure. Um, a question that I'm sure uh, Emily Lilly, Lilly is coming up in your heads right now is, wait, what if I don't want to go to any of those partner colleges? Because there's only 55 and there's like a million colleges in the States to choose from. That's understandable. So let us know what your top choice university is when you're ready to graduate and we'll help you make sure the credits transfer. Um, again, when you guys are graduating, this, this process is going to be seamless and we're but we'll likely have your dream school on our partner college list anyway, because we're growing super quickly. But I would say at this point, about 40% of our students don't go into partner colleges. We help them transfer Virto credits to non-partner schools. For you guys in California, um, much easier because we've got community colleges that offer Virto credits, so it's easy to take anywhere, honestly. Um, we don't have to go too much in the weeds there, but just know that being a California student, this is gonna be easy for you to take to other non-partner colleges. Um, uh, pretty seamlessly. Um, okay, so that's kind of the second thing that students can do. They can apply to Virto, let us know what school they're looking at, and we'll help them make sure this semester abroad fits in with their four-year timeline at their intended school, or their two-year timeline if the four-year school is not the right fit for them. Okay, we also have what's new this year a, uh, is our transfer guarantee, which is super exciting. So if a student applies to Virto, they don't need to indicate interest in a partner school. You can just apply to Virto to travel for a semester and figure it out. Um, that's totally okay. And I encourage everyone to do that, honestly. I think, I, I don't think there's somebody who wouldn't do well doing that. Um, so if somebody does that and applies to Virto, we accept them. They are guaranteed admission, whether they want it or not, to 25 of those schools I just showed you. So these 25 schools here have said, any Virto student who's accepted into the program 
they are guaranteed admission to our university if they hold a certain GPA on their virtual semester because we know they're going to add so much to our university campuses. So it's okay even if they um, haven't applied here. We're, we will accept them. We want them, and that's great. So there are 25 schools that students can keep in their back pocket if they, if they A, don't know what they want to do, or B, um, are already knowing they're, they're wanting to apply to Butler or Barry. All you got to do is get accepted to Virto, and then if you hold a certain GPA on your Virto semester, um, you are guaranteed admission to these 25 schools here. This is just another way to give yourself great options for college, and we have some really good schools on the transfer guarantee list, like Temple University, UVM in Vermont, University of Tennessee, JMU, High Point College of Worcester. There's really great schools on this list, and this will grow as well over the years. This is just our what, we, what we've got right now. When you guys are graduating, this will be bigger too. Make sense? Okay, great. Okay, I will stop talking soon, I promise. Last, last piece, um, and this is huge for us, is affordability and scholarships. And again, I'm gonna say it over and over again, this is this is for this fall we'll have so many more scholarships and maybe even a free semester by the time you guys are graduating that's our goal in the future to have a free semester we want this to be accessible however a couple things for you guys to know just keep in the back of your minds at this point ah there we go oh actually you're in california so this is the first time i get to use my fancy new california slideshow yay okay uh couple things for you guys to keep in mind as California students. You can add Virto to your FAFSA and your California Dream Act application when you're applying for federal aid. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Don't stress, work with your college counselor, counselors and Adrian on that as you're, you progress through your high school career. No worries. All that means is if you're eligible for federal financial aid or California state aid, the Cal Grant, you can use that award money with Virto. That's really huge. I don't think there's any other student travel organization out there where you can use federal aid and state aid in California to travel. That, I mean, it's just, this is groundbreaking. We're so excited. This is gonna open the door for so many California students to, to travel with us. Very simply put, the way that we do that is because our credits come from two, one of two California community colleges, College of Marin and College of Siskiyou, which I can barely say. If you haven't heard of those schools, it doesn't matter. They're California community colleges. They're gonna be recognized by the UCs, CSUs, and allow you to use federal and state aid on your virtual tuition. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks. I appreciate it, Emily. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're validating my existence. I, I like it. Um, in addition to that, we have Virto specific scholarships based on need and merit. So, in addition to federal aid and Cal Grant, oh, yeah, you can use our Opportunity Grant. This will be there when you guys are graduating. This is a need based scholarship worth up to $10,000 based on household income huge huge grant opportunity here um, for very low income students at this point if they earn less than sixty five thousand dollars a year in their household income they're going to automatically receive a ten thousand dollar grant they can use that on latin america or hawaii let's say they use that on latin america that's going to bring their tuition with virto down to five thousand dollars for their entire first semester of college that's not including Pell, uh, that's sorry that's not including federal aid and state aid so with federal aid and state aid for California students, subtracting that from $5,000 is going to bring that cost down to like a thousand bucks for your entire first semester of college. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention earlier, all those field semesters included in your tuition is all housing and meals. So there's no other costs for your first semester of college if you're choosing Latin America with the opportunity grant. So if you can pay off an thousand dollar tuition, you're good to go. I mean, it's, it's so, so cool to, to have this out there because we're seeing the diversity within our cohorts increase so much because so many more students are able to do this, which is our goal. We want this to be accessible. It's, it's, it's insane how inaccessible college is at this point and study abroad is at this point. So um, this is just a, an example of the, some of the stuff that we're doing. And again, by the time you guys are ready to graduate, there are going to be more opportunities. And I would say likely opportunities for a free semester, honestly. But at this point, this is, these are the opportunities. Sorry, these are the options. Um, so need-based grants are there. They will continue to be there. We've also got merit scholarships, too, that are good for any of our semesters, not just Latin America or Hawaii. So if you've got a great mentor like Adrian, they can nominate you for our leadership award. This is worth up to 5000 bucks off any of the semester costs. Um, okay, so to recap that, I'm gonna go back here actually. 
go back here. To recap that, your timeline as a California student could look like, apply to virtual as a partner college, travel your first semester abroad. Don't worry about this so much, Adrian, for you to know at this point, if a student wants to use Cal Grant, uh, they, they can choose Madrid or Costa Rica um, at this point. The, every semester will we'll have Cal Grant accessibility in years to come, actually this year probably, but at this point, it's just Madrid or Costa Rica. But you guys, Emily, Lily, don't worry about that. Um, your timeline, apply to Berto in high school, travel your first semester of college, transfer right in and just be ready to take on the world. It's a very, very seamless process and it'll only get easier and more accessible as we continue to grow. So super exciting stuff. Can I just okay. say something about tuition? I just, just to compare oh, yeah. to Cal State University is like five to six, like almost $6,000 a year and your UC schools are like UCLA, that kind of thing are um, $14,000 a year. So it is, kind of in line with that or less than, you know, it depends on where you're going to go. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and if you're a student, if you, if you're, if you have aspirations to get outside of California and go out of state, um, this is going to save you thousands of dollars on your college overall. So um, that's, yeah, that's a great point. Adrian. It's, it's all about context and thinking about what would I normally be paying for and what would I be paying for if I start college with Berto getting to travel. So that's, that's, um, that's a really great distinction. So I appreciate that. Um, okay, that is all I think I'm going to talk at you about. Um, we're right at 2 p.m. Any questions or thoughts or comments or concerns? I'll stop sharing my screen. <laughs> is this something, Lily, Emily, you think you might want to look into over the next couple of years? Yeah, I think it sounds really cool and like fun and something different. Appreciate it. Love it. Yeah, this is definitely something I'd be interested in and even more so when you partner with more schools so it will be yeah. really interesting yeah stay in touch that will that will all happen um yeah Josh can you go over I know there are some really cool projects that people were doing especially in the field semesters um that they were doing um like research and that kind of thing that were happening yeah and actually let me I can show you are we good on time still you guys good yeah yeah okay and I can show you a deep dive into some of the stuff students do now that we've got some time. So let's look at Costa Rica in a little more detail. What did I do with that slideshow? Oh boy. Sorry. This, I mean, you guys are getting a glimpse into my world of, of not being able to organize myself. Um, ignore all those tabs. That's not me. I didn't do that. Let's look at, here we go. So this is our slideshow for the, the spring semester. Uh, we actually just yesterday, if you can believe it, our students touched down in Fiji for their spring semester. Um, they're touching down today. I'm getting pictures, pictures from London, Costa Rica, and Hawaii right now uh, from students in our spring semester. So this is a deep dive into Costa Rica and an example of what students would get to do uh, in the field. So here we go. Start here. We're doing quarantine stuff too. If we have to do it next year, we will. I don't think we will. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that out there in the universe. We're not gonna have to do that stuff next year. Okay, so you can see here, sample assignments, sample projects you'll be doing in the field. If you're, if you're a language person, Spanish class, like no better way to learn a language than to live in the place that speaks that language, which makes sense, but not a lot of people have the opportunity. Um, special topics is a really cool course you'll do on any semester, no matter what, where you go with Verto. And then again, environmental science, ecological measurements, Costa Rican forest, like all this stuff is are things you'll be doing every single day. Um, the equivalent course for this in Fiji, I can show you some pictures too of that, would be collecting ocean samples um, off of coral reef uh, uh, bedrocks. I don't know the scientific terms. You, you get the idea. So th these are kind of some sample assignments. Um, Again, we do hubs in each region for specific courses. So Turiabla, I believe this semester is gonna be their development course. Um, and each region offers different, a different field, different academics, different site visits, different communities that you're traveling to. So we tried to map those specifically with the courses that students are taking, if that makes sense. I mean, yeah, food is like the best part about traveling. So I don't have to tell you guys that. Um, <laughs> and I guess, in, <laughs> I guess this spring they can get hamburgers and pasta too. So. Never, uh, never going to run out of food options. Um, that being said, too, if you're wondering, we can accommodate any dietary restrictions. Um, it's pretty easy to do that because we partner with people who are 
understanding and um, used to working with people from abroad coming into their community. So um, yeah, that's, that's always interesting. Here's some more base house pictures. Pretty nice digs. Uh, okay, um, shot from night, they're just hanging out. They got a little backyard space to kind of chill and have campfires and just eat um, all the good, the good food. Um, here's some more sample activities, daily stuff that we'll be doing. Of course, we got the rafting, we got the rafting I showed you, Bree Bree communities, uh, uh, underserved uh, jungle communities in Costa Rica. Um, we do archeological visits. Um, really cool NGO um, um, research facility, um, educational facility visits. We used to go to this Earth University in Costa Rica that does really great stuff on sustainability and conservation. So all these site visits are built in and again, tied into the things that you're learning. Um, so these are just some of the things that we do in Costa Rica as an example. Showed you that picture, that's Matt Yam. Matt Yam, also from LA actually. Um, I don't know who those other ones are, but I met Matt Yam in person, so that's why I know him. He's a really cool kid, doing really cool things now. Um, yep, rafting, rappling, we saw this. Again, that, that, this gives me anxiety looking at this, but that's for you to decide if you want to do it or not. Um, I think this is that Earth University I was just talking about. I'm feeling a sneeze coming on. One second. <coughs> Woo. Okay, Costa Rica, beautiful. La Fortuna is our second hub. Here's our base house in La Fortuna, a little bit more rustic. So again, remember, when you're traveling throughout these regions, the courses correspond with the region. So after Turiabla for one month, that course finishes, you're flying to La Fortuna, or driving, I believe, to La Fortuna here. So this is our base house there. A little bit more rustic, bungalow-y style. Yep, that's the complex there. Another shot from at night. You guys saw that picture. That's Brian, uh, one of our past instructors. He's, he's awesome. Really cool guy. La Fortuna, really cool highlights there. Um, that volcano, we get to do a hike up there. And it's an overnight hike if you want to kind of make it uh, a little bit more intense. Um, it's, not, it's, a non, it's not active. It's a dormant volcano. So no worries. 99.9% .9 sure it's, it's dormant. So, uh, okay. Yeah, there it is. That's, that's the picture of um, the volcano there. And yeah, just so many cool places to see in Costa Rica in the jungle. And I, you know, I didn't know water could get that color, but hey, I guess it does. Um, this would be on a site visit. I believe this would be for their environmental sciences course, learning about sustainable agriculture from local farmers. Um, oh, and that's it. So that's just kind of a look into life on a field semester. Um, after this semester in the spring, we'll have slideshows like this for our on-campus Europe semesters too. Um, Questions uh, on that? Okay. No. Yeah. What's that? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Cool. Uh, I have a question on applying. So, what, uh, is it a typical like where you apply? Um, you know, in early of the year, of your senior year kind of thing. Yeah. And how long does it take to actually get ex to know if you're accepted or not? Let's say you're going to go right to virtu virtu uh, virtual education thing and not mm -hmm. apply to colleges. For sure. Um, okay, so I would approach it, approach Virto the exact same way as you would approach any college application. So if you know you want to do this, apply as soon as you can. You guys can start your application now, honestly, if you want. You have a little bit more flexibility where as soon as we have a junior year transcript, we can get you acceptances or admission decisions from partner colleges. So you can, you could potentially walk into senior year, just like, I'm done. I know what I'm doing. I got into college through Virto. I'm spending my first semester abroad, like, and just be done with it. That's flexibility that you have. When you finish your Virto application, it can take as little as one day to be accepted. Our, our review team's really quick with that. And depending on what partner college you selected, it can take, most at most three weeks a lot of times it's sooner than that to receive an admission decision from the partner college that you selected um so again as early as possible if you know that you want to do virto if you know you'd like to apply to university of tennessee or william and mary or one of those colleges just do it as early as you can as soon as we have that junior year transcript that's all you need and we'll get back to you uh, relatively quickly with answers from there and what about the SAT or ACT scores? Does that matter if you're going to apply to Virto right out of high school, or do you have to, you know, obviously with the other schools, they require that sometimes. Uh, we not, it's test optional to apply to Virto. Um, okay. 
most of our partner colleges are test optional now too. So that just depends on, on which partner school you select. Um, I think I think almost every college now I've heard is going test optional because of, of COVID, which is what they should have done, honestly, even before COVID, but um, yeah. they're being more flexible now. If a partner requires a student's test scores, or if they say, hey, we need test scores to get a bigger, fuller picture of the student, we'll let them know they can submit that. Um, so it's, it's not required. I would say if a student has good test scores and they know it's going to make their application look better, send them on over. We're not going to, it, like, it can only help you. And is there essay questions? Like, like UCs, you know, you have to have like prompts for essays. Mm. Um, yeah. We ask for a 500 word writing sample. Um, that can be your common app essay. That could be a personal statement. We can give you a prompt if you want. That they have, Students have flexibility on that. We just need to see their learning style and it's, it's preferable to have a piece that shows a period of self-awareness or reflection. Um, but if they've like published an article or something, they can submit that too. And that's, that's fine. And then my last question would be, can you, do you have students who go right into a second semester um, in another location? And so let's say they want to do a whole year, um, earn an additional 16, up to 16 units, and then, you know, go another somewhere else. Totally. We have a lot of students who do the full year. Um, you can't do the same semester twice. Um, so you can't stay in Costa Rica for a full year because the courses, of course, will just overlap. Um, sorry, my nose is, I'm like leaking, guys. I'm so sorry. I had a sneeze attack right in the middle of this. Um, it's good that we're Zoom, actually. <laughs> um, so what students usually do is they'll, if they do a full year, they'll start at a field semester and do a fall semester in, uh, at, in Europe on one of the on-campus options, just because that's a nice transition back into sort of traditional college life. Um, but they could do two field semesters if they want to, no worries. That's a good question. Okay, and are they about three, are they about the same length of time as a regular college semester, like three months? Exactly, everyone's three months, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, and then do students typically go home during that time or no, they're, they're in there for the whole time and then they go home at the end of the three months? No, no time to go home. Yeah, for okay. sure. You're talking about in one semester? Yes. Yeah, no time to go home in one semester. We do do a parents weekend where the parents can come fly in and visit their students. So that's up to families <laughs> if they want to take advantage of that. Um, a lot of students are like, no, that's all right. But um, yeah, so we will do that. But yeah, they can't go home during the semester. If they do a full year, they can go home for the, um, uh, the holiday break. break, of course. They can just go right. back. Yeah. Right. With typical colleges, I think that's like a six-week break minimum, usually. Yeah, our, our semester, our fall semester ends um, September, October, November, in early December. And the spring semester starts uh, typically in, in early, mid-ish February. This year, it started later because of you know the world um so they'll have that that same time block in between yeah great anything else guys um i have a question yeah so who hires like the teachers and are they like professors from certain like colleges or universities to come teach the students or that is an awesome question and i, and I have a slide on that but i skipped over because i didn't want to go too into, into the weeds but you asked it so that's that's an awesome question emily <laughs> I like that you're thinking thoughtfully about this um, a lot. So this, the people who travel with you are going to be program leaders and professors both. Now, they, to answer the question just face value, they come from all over the place. They have to have high degrees, master's, PhDs in the field that they're teaching. So like anthropology, environmental sciences, the program leaders have to have experience leading groups within these regions. They have to have experience leading groups of young people. And most importantly, they have to be passionate about working with college freshmen, 18 year olds. We don't want people who are gonna blow off freshman seminars. We want people who thrive when working with students who are in this kind of transition point in their lives. So what that means is not only are they gonna be great academic mentors for you, they're incredible personal, emotional, developmental mentors. They can talk about everything from, hey, I'm feeling homesick. What, how do I handle this to, hey, I don't understand what this guy said to me out in the field today because I don't understand this culture. They can help you through all those things and they make the programs unique and special in my opinion. They're some of the coolest people in, you, you'll ever meet. I'll, I'll give an example. I'm sorry, I'm still leaking, so forgive me there. I went to Asia to visit our students in Asia last year when we had a semester there. Of course, we couldn't do it this year because, you know, the world. Um, 
one of our professors was philosophy joe they called him and he had taught university courses in like pakistan and bhutan and in all over the u.s he was the coolest guy his stories were incredible and those are the people that we hire to lead these trips and these programs we're not just going to hire a run-of-the-mill tweed jack professor who again is just going to like blow up a freshman seminar because it's freshman so great question did that answer it at all yes thank you yeah, yeah. geographically they come from all over the place <laughs> yeah um, i have a question how many people do we usually travel with like in the groups mm, good question for field semesters your group is no more than 25 um for on-campus semesters, class size is also no more than 25, but you might have like 100 or 200 in your residence hall. We can do a lot of students in, in on Europe semesters. Um, uh, for the field semesters, the reason we keep the groups smaller, uh, two reasons. One, um, it's not ethical to send 100 Americans to small communities and say, okay, we're here now. This is, we're gonna you know, take this place over. That's not a great way to travel or an ethical way to travel. Uh, two, if it's a smaller group in a more kind of off the beaten path place, it just helps you bond, I think, much better with people because um, you're all in the same boat and you're all going through the same thing together. That can be challenging at times, to be honest. And so it's good to have a tight knit core, I think. Um, so that's why we do 25 for field semesters. Yeah. What else? All right, well, I will end the recording there. I'll let you guys go. Um, Adrian, I'll send you a follow-up email with some of the stuff condensed if you want to pass along or connect me with your friend or whatever. Uh, totally Thank up you. to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Emily and Lily, my email is josh at vertoeducation.org. Simple. So shoot me an email anytime you want. Um, and hope to hear from you guys uh, um, down the line. But thank you so much, and I appreciate your time. And um, stay safe and healthy and sane out there. All right. And Emily and Lily, just you can always email me and I can give you.